Hello. As you can see, Arnold is rendering a scene with lots of glass. It's just cleaning up pixels here, anti-aliasing, etc. This is 1000 pixels wide, so it's not really dramatic. Ten years ago, this would have taken a whole night to render. Um, the thing I want to show you is how light works on objects. Uh, you have a glass reflection, which is very typical. The glass reflects what's at the bottom and projects it at its own top. So the blue here from a spotlight, by the way, um, is uh, placed at the top of the glass bead, whereas the black here is projected at the bottom of the glass. But why is it so complex? Why it looks like windows? And it's the same here. And it's the same in all bubbles. It's a complex thing, whereas the whole scene is basically blue and black. And the reason for this is the following. I mapped uh, an image around the whole scene. That's the image here. And uh, the image works on the beads but it doesn't show up in the rendering. So if we go here, go a little bit further in the animation like this. Um, well, if we render this scene, for example, did you see that little shaking? That's because uh, Arnold has to calculate the motion blur. Now it's updating the scene in a second. You see we have all the lovely beads which will reflect here, but black in the background. It's actually a very nice image. Random rendering. All with motion blur, of course. And they're blurred quite dramatically here because they are um, expanding. They're moving away from each other at this time of the scene here. It's uh, cleaning up pixels down here. It's really a really cool reflection. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Just let's finish this rendering here because I'm so pleased with this image. That's a big problem, actually. You, you fall in love with certain images and then you these things hold, hold you up. I mean, you create a synthetic scene uh, in order to achieve something and then you look at the scene from a different angle and you say to yourself, wow, I didn't never, I never thought about this. It really looks nice. And then you develop things into another direction. For example, I could render just the surface now. But that's not what I want to talk about now. So the rendering is completed. 1 minute and 12 seconds. I saved the image. And now I tell you how this whole scene works in terms of lighting. There are two menus you can use in order to check these things. Um, don't worry about what is in the scene. You'll see it in, in a second. The Light linking is uh, a relationship thing, and the relationships are under Windows because it's such a general thing. Um, relationship editors, and here you find the light linking set. And uh, you can choose whether you want to see the lights on the left side of that upcoming window or on the, on the right side. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So this is the light linking tool in the relationships editor world. Uh, on the left side we have our lights, light sources. And I have only two lights and this is only the folder for the default light set. We don't. We just ignore this. So we have a spotlight and a sky dome light. On the right hand side I have um, the shaders here. Uh, so I can choose whether I want the spotlight to work on this or that shader. But I can also tell the spotlight to work on certain objects like the run run skin here that's basically the object which makes the beads doesn't matter it's an next gen thing uh, no, don't worry about it uh, let's click on the spotlight and on the spotlight you see the spotlight does work on the object the character which makes the beads and it works on the plane whereas the sky dome light 
I click on it now and see it. Watch out for changes on the right hand side. The plane is not activated. That means I let the SkyDome light not affect the plane but all the rest. And the reason why the SkyDome light is not visible in the rendering, but instead we see black in the background, is here. You click on the SkyDome light in the Outliner, go to, well, the Attribute Editor, and here you see the intensity, so it does have some intensity, 0 0.2, but I uh, reduced the value for the visibility in the camera from the default which is 1 to 0. If I um, raise this to say 0 0.5 I see a dim background of that image here which I really don't want to see. So you can manipulate very clearly what kind of light and background image you want to have working on your scene. Let me reduce this again to black and uh, I've showed you the light linking relationships editor. Now let's go to Arnold and utilities and here we have a light manager. The light manager cannot decide about what kind of light works on what kind of object but it can change the intensities for example or the color of lights. So for example if we want to see only the effect of the sky dome light we reduce the exposure of the spotlight this line here to zero. No spotlight only sky dome light. So the sky dome which is showing as black has a light effect on the rest of the scene actually another nice rendering and all the yellow things here come from the light in, working in the background. So here is the sky dome in the front view here. Press um, E in order to rotate it and now check what's happening here on the ground and uh, in other areas when I rotate the background image. Now let's rotate it further. So it really depends on how you rotate that 300 degree image. And now of course if you like that dark look here you go back to Arnold Utilities Light Manager and you raise the intensity of the sky dome light. And now you have the background image working dramatically on the beads without actually showing the background image, which is a cool effect. So two things, Arnold Utilities Light Manager and Windows Relationship Editors Light Linking. Have a nice day.